Hi, today I wanted to talk a little bit about iPhone screen repair because I feel like a lot of people are really misguided in how it is they should be dealing with this industry. So the first thing that I would like to say is that iPhone screen repair is something that will never, ever, 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 ever go back to being as profitable or as lucrative as it once was. So let's go over the numbers here for a little bit. Now, in 2008 and 9, when this really started to become a booming industry in the 2008 and 9 days, your option was to go to Apple. Apple, for two or three hundred dollars, depending, usually two or three hundred bucks, they would hand you a new uh, refurbished phone or a new phone that did not have your data on it, and they would take your old one back. Whereas you, the repair shop, were taking a piece of glass, one dollar from China, five dollar domestically in the 3G and 3GS days, and you were turning that into fifty to seventy dollars. So let's just write all of that down over here. So I'm going to go over to the screen capture, and we're just going to take a look at that in the... Here we go. Screen capture is this one. So let's just open up Calc and get started here. You're an SSD. You should take less time to get started here. Okay. Let's zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay. Now, I should minimize Open Broadcaster so I don't have that nonsense. There we go. So, we're zoomed, so let's so let, we're gonna go over here and type cost of part service price. So that's what we charge the customer, and then we're going to put in what Apple would charge. So let's just go over the here. So iPhone 3G slash 3GS. Ah, uh, wrongs. So cost of part, $1. Service price, let's say if you're a store in Manhattan, which is you know, a ripoff, uh, you would be passing that on to your customer and probably charging 20 bu 70 bucks. And what Apple would charge is 200 to $300, right? And conditions of Apple would be no data. Yeah, so we're just going to take that and put it here. So this is my little spreadsheet. Now, Let's go to iPhone 4 slash 4S. Cost of part. Now, the thing is, of course, this always varied over time. But let's go into when it averaged out. So sometime in, let's say, two th late 2011, 2012, and 2013. If I wanted to buy the highest quality I could get from China, like the really high quality stuff, I was paying somewhere between 20 to 30 bucks. Let's average it out and say $25. Now, you had people charging anywhere from $65 to $110. So let's average that out and say maybe $85 or $90. Because I remember the, the highest price person in that time was maybe $110. Bucks, and the cheapest dude was doing it for like $65. So let's just average it out to $90. And what Apple would charge was $200 to $300. And again, no data. So over here, you have what really seems like a viable business model. Now, keep in mind in the iPhone 4 and 4S days, this over here, you see this over here? This, was, this meant that you had a higher startup cost because it wasn't about buying a $1 piece of glass. And also you had to worry about, you had to worry about CDMA versus GSM, and you had a lot more to worry about. So the startup cost here was higher, but it was still a model that, that, that you could presumably do something with. Now let's move over to the iPhone 5. Now for the longest period of time, you have to realize for a really long period of time, this was not a viable phone to repair. Uh, really was not a viable phone to repair. So you have, the cost of the part was really high, but eventually, eventually, like, by the time, I'm not kidding, by the time the phone was obsolete to the point where it didn't really, you know, it was just, it was the older model, it, the screen, let's say, was about 35 bucks. So if I wanted to buy a really high quality screen, we're looking at, say, 35 bucks. Service price, people, some people are charging 70, some people are charging 100. Let's just go in the middle and say 80 to 90, let's say 90 bucks. And price Apple would charge 200 to 300, and again, no data. Now, let's go over to the iPhone 6, because this, this, is, this is the part where I, I feel like a lot of people should be noticing a pattern, but they're not noticing a pattern. If I want to buy from a quality company, a company that sells good stuff that I've always been buying from, I'm paying 97 bucks for the screen. Apple charges 109, and done in store, no loss of data. So, what I can charge is something like 109. Now, this is where some pattern recognition should really come into play here. So, again, now let's say you charge more. So, let's say you go above Apple because you got people charging more than Apple. Now, over here, 
Apple is two to three hundred in year seventy. Uh, let's, let's add one more to this. Customer reaction is going to be happy, happy. In the beginning, beginning unhappy because remember it was a lot of money. So remember in the beginning, the you, you were buying the iPhone five screen for like one hundred seventy bucks. So unhappy, but and happy. Actually, semi happy. Here's why. So remember how I said the iPhone 5 screen only started to come down in price when the phone was already obsolete? Well, now, again, with the iPhone 3, the phone, the iPhone 3GS, the phone itself was still Apple's latest model and the screen was a dollar. With the iPhone 5, th by the time the screen came down in price to where it was reasonable, the 5S was out, so people are like, eh, I kind of want to upgrade. So semi-happy. But now, when you're telling people that you cost more than Apple, the customer reaction is going to be pissy. And so let's take a look at this over here. Lots of profit and customers are happy. S profit, but customers are semi-happy. Pissy. This is not a long-term sustainable business model. And it's continuing. And it will continue to go on like this. You sh Again, when people are like, oh, well, I've, I can do it faster than Apple. And because I do it faster than Apple, I still make a lot of money. So let's get this straight. So you, pretty much the only reason that somebody's going to come to you over going to the manufacturer, where, by the way, they're going to get a better part and a better warranty with the manufacturer than through you, for sure. But uh, the only reason that they're coming to you is because you're close by. They're not coming to you because you're the best. Because, again, you don't have the best part. Apple does. You're not coming because of the best part. They're not coming to you for the best price <clears throat> or the best quality. They're coming to you because... And my car broke down and, well, it broke down in front of this gas station and I don't really trust that mechanic to fix it because he's putting a needle in his arm and I'm pretty sure that that's not medicine in there, but I need to get where I'm going and I'd rather ha take a chance with him fixing it than push my car six miles down the road. So fuck it, let's let them fix it. You're trying to tell me that that is your long-term profit center, that that is your sustainable business model. When I say that iPhone screen repair is no longer a viable method to make a living or as good as it was before, that's your fucking argument. That is bullshit. That is bullshit, and that is going to come back to bite you in the ass. Really, it is really going to come back to bite you in the ass. You're charging more than the manufacturer for a shittier part, you're charging more than the manufacturer for a shittier part. And the only reason, the only reason that somebody would use you is because they don't, because you just so happen to be the gas station that their car broke down in front of. Again, in Manhattan, there's a lot of Apple stores, so it's easier for somebody to go to Apple. But, you know, I understand that in the small towns, that in the, you know, in the more rural areas, that Apple's further away and that it's a bit more of a pain in the ass. But what I'm asking you is, do you really want to base your business, again, do you really want to base your future on being that gas station in the middle of nowhere and, ho and praying that somebody's car breaks down? Is that really what this business has devolved to? And if that is what this business has devolved to, is that something that you really want to be relying on to feed your family and to pay your rent without diversifying into anything else? Because if I were you, I would be scared shitless. Then there are the people that honestly don't even, they're not even arguing that this is something that is going to make them money. They're just saying, well, I have to do it to keep my customers happy. I have to keep doing business to do business. And as I talked about in a more recent video, uh, it doesn't make sense to do business to do business. And it doesn't make sense to do something just because you see other people doing it. As I said, that's a mistake that I made with the supply company. You know, with the question that I would ask you is, uh, for all you people who exist doing iPhone repair as a business, all you people who are doing it in 2008, 9, 10, and even those of you who started late in the game in 11, 12, and 13, you started, again, you, you, you guys started when, you know, this, I should be able to scroll faster, but I'm not cool, when, like, this was the norm. You started when this was the norm. Would you have, st would you, have, be honest with yourself, when you looked and said, hmm, I think there's profit here, and this was true, would you have said that to yourself when this was true? Would you have said three or five or six years ago, let's make this my living when these were the statistics? When this was true. 
Because I'm pretty sure that you wouldn't have. I'm pretty sure that you're smart enough that you wouldn't have said, if that was the case, that this is what I'm going to do, that this is a viable business. The reason that now you're coming up with all these excuses as to why this is a viable business, where, oh, I'm more convenient, oh, customers are willing to pay more, oh, I still have business coming in. The reason you're saying that is because you're invested in it. You're invested in it, and you don't want to hear that what you've invested in is something that is falling apart. You don't want to believe that your entire empire is crumbling and falling apart to ship because now you have to face the hard reality of what am I going to do for a living? What skills do I have that I can market in, uh, in, a, in a world where I can't make money fixing iPhone screens anymore? And that's hard. It's easier to just come up with little reasons to convince yourself that this is a great business. But my question to you is if you go back in time to the day that you started your business and you looked at the facts and you, in the day that you started your business, the facts were that the screen was 97 bucks and that Apple did it for 109 without erasing your data. Would you have thought this was a great business idea? Before you got invested in it, before you built a living around it, before you had four employees on it, before you moved into a nice new apartment that you paid for off of iPhone screen repair, before all of this, when you first started, would you honestly say that this is a good idea if the stats back then were the same as the stats were now? Because I'm pretty sure if you had half a brain, you wouldn't. So be honest with yourself about what it is you're actually doing. You know, and for all of you people who are, who are saying, well, I have to do it because I don't want to lose business, or I think the prices are going to come down in a month, this, that, and the other. They're not going to come back down. Do you know why? Because you're sending the message to China. You're sending a message to every single one of these vendors that they can fuck us in the ass and that we're more than happy to keep bending over. That we're more than happy. Oh, you want the screen to be $60 on a three-year-old phone? That's fine. Oh, you want the screen to be $90 on a three-year-old phone? That's fine. We'll pay for it. We'll take it in the ass however you like. And you can send us the screens with the with the yellow bubbles in them that delaminate, that pop out of the frames, that, um, that, uh, that have all the fucked up colors and you know what we'll just keep paying whatever you want because we're that scared of losing our business that is sad because you've all done that because you have been doing business to do business without uh, thinking about your long-term profitability the prices are never going to come down because even if the cost of the materials comes down all of these suppliers have collectively realized that we are idiots they have collectively realized that we do not give a shit what we are paying for anything that this is an industry of people that would pay five dollars for a penny i decided to stop being an idiot months ago i edited my website my website at this time says we fix iphones for data recovery only. We have screens laying around, and when we are done with them, we will not be fixing these phones anymore. And that, for once, believe it or not, the Apple Store is actually your best option. I've always said that I firmly believe in, in doing business with customers when I believe I am their best option, or at the very least, a damn good one. And right now, I do not believe I am a good option at all. I can't say that the screen that I'm getting is the same screen that Apple's using every single time. I'm, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, the Chinese person that sold it to me said it's original, so it must be. But you know, again, that's that's a different level of uh, that's a different level of trust than what you get when you actually go to an Apple store. And if the Apple store is charging you that much, I'm not doing work for ten bucks. I have to talk to the customer. I have to fix the phone for the customer. I have to talk to the customer again when they return. When they say that my button worked six months ago and now it doesn't and it's probably because of your screen repair, I have to have a 20-minute conversation with that customer. That's not something that I'm doing for $10. That's something that I'm going to be charging $30 or $50 or $60 for. And if I do that on top of the cost of a $97 screen, now I cost $50 or $60 more than Apple for a part that I can't really certify was made by Apple. So, again, I've always, people have always said, that's, that's bullshit. You're not going to tell people when you're not the best option. I do it all the time. I put my money where my mouth is. And frankly, you can look at my site right now if you don't believe me. It says it right here. So if I go to my website, if my computer decides to work because I'm real-time encoding this video while also encoding proxies for other videos, this is my site right now. My iPhone tab changed to iPhone data recovery. When you click here, it says we can retrieve your data. We properly treat your phone's board. We don't fix liquid damage phones. And we tell people, better to go to Apple for that. Broken screen, you might want to try an Apple store. I tell you that Apple will actually fix your phone for people who are concerned that they won't. Uh, I talk about avoiding hardware issues. I talk about the parts that are getting used when you go to places that are fixing your phone for your iPhone 6 for 90 bucks. Good luck with the parts that are getting put in your phone. And I'm honest about it. Completely, 100% honest. I believe that somebody else is the best option. And 
you know, here's the other thing about doing business to do business. So you think that because all these other places are fixing phones and making money, that you can fix phones and make money too, right? Because everybody else is doing it. That means that it's really easy for you to do it. You're looking at all these places that have money and that have stores and that have four or five employees and great lives. They made the money for that in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And that money that they made over the past seven years is what they're using to pay for everything now. Because they sure as shit are not making the same money now that they made seven years ago. So again, when you're looking at other businesses, when you're looking at other people, don't say, wow, they have a million dollars. That's impressive. That's not what you should say. You should look for what they started with. When I look at somebody with a million dollars, my first question is not, do you, you know, wow, you have a million dollars. My, the first thing I'm thinking is, huh, you have a million dollars. Did you start with five? That's what I'm really interested in. Did you manage to lose money over the course of being in business? So don't look at these people that have nice stores and nice stuff because that stuff, that was paid for during a different time than right now. And for you people who are doing business to do business, for you people who are just fixing phones for fucking free, um, stop, stop, seriously. Because the time that you're putting into doing that is time you could put into anything else. And those other things that you could be doing are things that can make you money. Again, if I had started the Component Level Motherboard Project four years earlier because I didn't waste time selling screens on the internet, because I thought that would be a great business. Imagine how much smarter I'd be right now. Again, instead of, as I said in a different video, you know, I'm sitting in a small 200 square foot office as the only person in my business that fixes motherboards with a job ad online looking for people who may be able to do it just so that I'm not the only one doing it. I could have an industrial warehouse with a team of 15 people doing this in contracts of places all around the world with the extra four years that I could have dedicated to this business versus a different one. But I don't have that because I wasted my time on bullshit that didn't make money. Imagine what you could be doing right now. Imagine the programming languages you could be learning. Imagine the servers that you could be learning. Imagine the solutions that you could be learning how to offer customers. Imagine the things you could be learning how to do outside the technology business to make money that you're not learning because you're wasting time fixing iPhones for $5 in fucking profit with a $97 part. Stop. Stop hoping that you're going to get customers for your screen protectors. Stop hoping and praying that you're going to get people to buy your charge cable and that there's going to be more profit in the damn charge cable you sell the customer than the fucking the complicated screen repair that you just did in their phone. Just stop. Start focusing on things that will make you money and stop putting all of your heart and your time and your effort into something that is just very obviously falling apart. I'm here to tell you that when they start tying the screen to the CPU of the phone and you have to be a little LCD refurbisher and you have to sit on that little fucking machine doing this crap all day, that you're going to wish that you listen to me because that stuff's going to be miserable. It's not going to make you a lot of money. It's going to require a huge upfront investment. And it's going to be in an industry that overall, that every, the, world, the world has just moved past. And you need to realize that. I realized that early on and I'm glad for it because it's going to give me more time to do more things that are going to make me money.